if everything I'm doing lately seems to have something to do with the swatch, it's because it does. Um, I'm, I've, I've let this um, <clears throat> prototype, gold prototype, lead me down uh, a path of, um, of being very interested in the swatch. So the thing I want to do today is, is um, this is a swatch chrono from 1992. And I bought this basically for its band. Um, it was broken and uh, I'm gonna disassemble it today just for fun. But the, um, I bought it for its band because the, the, the GG's band, the GG came with this free ring and the free ring doesn't work. It's, it's too thin for the swatch straps. So like this, it came with this swatch strap And it kind of, the, the tip of it will get under there, but that's about it. Um, and it doesn't, it's, it's hard to deal with. Um, it definitely won't go in further than that. So I started buying swatches just to see if different, if any of their bands would work with this free ring and the reason I was interested in that is because it, it's now pretty much completely established that the GG is not a prototype for a swatch. But basically, none of these, none of the swatch straps will fit through this free ring. It's just too thin. So. In theory, it could have been made for plastic, but it, 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 my belief is that it was made for uh, lizard skin, which was like 1960s with a, the waterproof um, luxury brands in the 60s were, were lizard skin, which is thin, probably backed with leather. But anyway, that's, the, that, that's one of the reasons I ended up with a bunch of swatches. The other is, and this is why I want to remove the movement from this one. Um, the, the chronograph, which came out in 1990, is the only case that, that's similar, very similar, sorry, not the only, it's the first case that's very similar to the GG in terms of the contour on the back. And um, at the same time that it's, it's similar, um, it's not identical. And so I want to have it free from its case so you can see, or actually so I can make some other um, videos where I show that it's not the same. Basically it's, it's flatter in the back. And but I want to have it out of the case because it's easier to see that if, if, you, if you're comparing uh, watches without crystals. So this may not make any sense to anybody who hasn't watched all my other videos, but that's just telling you the story. Now the other thing is... The, the, the chronograph is interesting. Oh, I have a 1990 also, which I bought for the same reason. This is the, this is the first year. This one's called Wall Street. It's made in 1990. And um, I also bought this to see if its strap was thin enough to go through the buckle or through the free ring, and it's not. Um, and you can see the contour on the back of that also. So anyway, it has 22 jewels the chronograph which i thought would make it interesting to take apart and it's also a watch that was not designed to ever be serviced which is interesting the crystal doesn't come off but um i managed to take the crystal off 
with my Omega tool. And that the, the Omega tool is not made for this crystal. This crystal is 33.6, I think. Thirty-three point five point seven. I'm not sure what what it is um, by the book, but it's thirty-three point five. Let's say and this is designed for thirty-two point eight, so it's point seven millimeters bigger than this is designed for. But this has the capacity to to grab it. And what was cool about that for me is it gave me a chance to see if there was any way to remove that crystal safely using a, a, a tool that's almost correct for it. No, I won't be able to get this out of there. But um, it was not possible. The, 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 the tool was damaged in the process. I mean, not the tool, the crystal was damaged and the case because they are welded together the wave swatch but that was um a fun experiment anyway and i think here you can see how damaged that crystal was just getting it out so parts of it are still in there parts of it came up parts of it stuck basically to the case so if you had this watch and you wanted to service it, forget it. Um, there is something I'll show you though, which is kind of cool. Or it's it, also if you have one of these, you need to know if you change the battery. Um, I'll show you how to synchronize the hands. So right now they're. It's a, it's a typical chronograph arrangement. It's got hours, 12 hours here, 30 minutes here, and 60 seconds on the center hand. And if you, if the hands get out of sync, the normal function is, you know, you start the chronograph and then you stop it and reset it and all three of these hands will go back to their top position. But if you change the battery or if it gets messed up, then you have to resynchronize. So the way you resynchronize it is you pull to the halfway position on the crown. Sorry, there's two clicks, one, two. So the middle one allows you to synchronize uh, these two dials so that's that one that's that one and then if you pull all the way out you can synchronize this one so let's set them all for 15 seconds just so you can see what what the meaning of synchronization is in case you don't know so we're going to pretend like we want these synchronized like that, okay? So now they're all synchronized. Now when we start it, it starts at 15, stop it, and when I, when I reset it, it'll go back to 15. That's obviously not what we want, but that is what the, that's what synchronization allows you to do. So then if we go back to... what we really want. This is halfway out, the, the, the crown. And then all the way out. Okay, now it's resynchronized. One thing that's cool about a 12 hour chronograph, which a lot of chronographs, particularly I think even more recent swatches aren't, like the moon swatch. Um, 
I think these are 10 hour. Let me get down the screen. Second hand, 60 seconds, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, so that's a 10 hour chronograph. And um, the good thing about a 12 hour chronograph is you can, you can use it as a dual time zone thing. If you start it with the proper offset to where your, the, your, your primary time zone is. So you start it at midnight in whatever, wherever you want it to be a second time zone for. And because it's 12 hours uh, on this wheel, it'll always tell you the hour in the, the time zone where you started at midnight, obviously. Um, I, I, I've done that with mechanical chronographs also. It's a cool way to use it as a, as a GMT or a secondary time zone. Okay, so anyway, the next thing I want to do is This watch is already um, destroyed because I removed the crystal, so it's not going back together. And I, I, I'm not—I'm going to be a little bit. No, I'm not—I'm not really going to be careful taking it apart. I was going to say I'll be a little bit careful. Perhaps I'll reuse the hands for something, or damaged that hand already, at least bent it. Um, this is kind of a good test for me actually because I've never removed chronograph hands before. These seem pretty easy. Now I'm guessing that the, the the next step is just to get the the crown out. And what I've seen on some other swatches is you just force it out. You just like it's a press fit basically. It's already, well, it's already at the second position. Let's see. Yeah, so then that that's probably going to free the movement, although we might also have to get the pushers. The, the, the case is actually damaged on this side, so I can easily lift that there. Okay, so that's the... That's the case. Battery, I can use that in some other swatch. Um, the monocoque case. And then, how much do we want to get into this?
Mm. It's got four motors, at least. I'm really curious about this, but think about it. I guess. I don't understand what, oh, I know, I have to go like this. I'm having trouble focusing. So one thing that's interesting is that even though this is not made to be taken apart or repaired, it's, it's screwed together. Which is interesting. Feels like there's a spring under there. I don't see any jewels yet. Seems pretty well made. Again, it's curious that it's not it's not supposed to be serviceable. See what's under here. Ooh. I guess those are jewels. That's funny. Those are white jewels. They don't bother, yeah. No need for pigment. So there you've got four, five, six, seven jewels already. Wow, that's cute. So that's a reminder, you know, when you when you think of this as a quartz watch, it's not just electronics and magic. It's mechanical. The only thing the quartz is doing is giving you um, seconds. Oh, there's some jewels here that are actually um, red colored. 
So what was that? Seven before? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's more jewels here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, this watch was working mechanically. I said it wasn't working, but actually it was working. I just took the strap. But the, um, and the Wall Street, the, the one from 1990 that I have is also working. So those are 32 year old. This is 30, the Wall Street is 32. These are quality watches. And I'm not just saying that. You can see it. Again, the, 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 this idea behind this watch that it was wouldn't need service, that meant that they had to make them quality. Look at that, more gears. That's amazing. I'm curious how these are or were made, like if they're made, even though they have all these screws, if they're made robotically. And I'm also, I'm also curious why they made them with all these screws. One thing, you might be able to do is use a swatch quartz movement in a different case. This one is obviously being destroyed, but we'll see what the what the ETA it should have a, a caliber number in it somewhere. They should make service cases for these watches. So if your case is all old and broken, you could uh, move the movement into a service case. There's some more jewels. More jewels. There's the coil. I'm going to have to read to understand how this even works. The coils just turn these tiny gears. Each one have like a little gear beside it. Do, the, do those gears have magnets in them? I guess so.
Oh, there's our ETA. Two five one two six It's fun to just disassemble things when you have no intention of putting them back together. It's like zero stress. Wow, see there's a lot of mechanical complexity to these watches. Amazing. I wonder if the dial is okay. Now this should have a chip on it somewhere. I'm impressed. What's holding that dial? There's a dial foot there. I guess it's just a press fit thing. There's your base plate. Um, interesting. You know, these watches are made to last. This one lasted 30 years and it was still going strong. And there's like, if there's lubrication here, which there probably is, I think I can feel it. But it is just, you know, tiny amount. Can't even see it. Tiny jewels, really cool, really efficient design. I think these things are probably riveted. Not sure what that. Try to break one off of there, but. So that's it. Now I just have to put it back together. No. Um, oh, the one thing I want to look at, is that a... Oh, 
not sure what that is. Riveted onto this board, there's going to be a ASIC application specific integrated circuit, which will be under a little bubble of plastic, I presume. Since that's riveted on there, oh wait, it's right there, duh. So that's the brain. That's the whole main board of the watch. That's it. All the logic. Runs the stepper motors. And so basically you have power going to the stepper motors and you have contacts going to the pushers and the also the, the that setting mechanism I showed you for synchronizing that that is electrical also so it's mechanical so you can set the time in the normal way um, and then it's electrical in the two outermost well it's it's also electrical in the when pulled out to put the, the logic into the um, synchronization mode with the buttons, which are obviously also electrical. So that's that. That's a Swatch Chrono 1990. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.